Chris and this is my Holly Part 7 video. In this video we're going to be going over a lot of different little repairs and things to do to these carburetors. The main thing is the throttle shaft repair. So we're going to show the little plastic or nylon bushings that kit comes. But then I also bought the reamer and we're going to ream it out and put the correct brass bushings that you see on the internet. Also we're going to add the check ball blowout protection on this one i think we can only do it to one but we're going to see if we need a drill press or we can just do it uh, on the table we're going to tap and drill that hot air choke hole we're going to fix these vent tubes and just go over any other random information that i can add to these holly videos i've been making so let's just go over the quick information then we'll get into the project so these vacuum diaphragms they have different links and just make sure you have the right number so these both have three three zero so I hope these are the right ones, but just check stuff out like that. On these Hollies, there's two check balls. The small one is for the vacuum diaphragm housing. The big one is for the accelerator pump. The small one for the vacuum diaphragm mics in at 0.154 of an inch. Then the accelerator pump ball mics at 0.185 of an inch, in case you have these mixed up or trying to figure out which one's which. So that meter and block in the other video that was stripped out, I was able to save this 100% because the threads on the power valve strip before the threads on the meter and block. So I did it off camera because it was very difficult to get this started. And I got both of these for about 12 or 13 off of eBay. And I used plenty of oil and it took me about 15 minutes to do it to carefully get these started. But once I got them started, it threaded it out. So if you got a stripped a power valve that left a metal in there you can clean it out and it's good to have one of these anyway okay so that worked out 100 percent there was no thread damage at all and i saved this meter and block okay so let's do the vent tubes because they're super easy these are too short and especially the way they cut them the fuel can possibly splash out of them so these are 5 16 brass tubes you can see they come out pretty easy i don't know why they cut them down that short this one will probably be okay, but the problem is it's pretty sharp. I don't like it. Get those out, throw them in the trash. So I, I didn't buy any brass tubes. I just got some 5 16 steel brake lines. I might paint them, but just for right now or until I can find some brass tubes. Now the steel seems to be a little bit bigger on the outside, so I had to grind them down. So if you mic the original ones, they're 0.308 or 9 of an inch, in case you're trying to find some. So you see the brake lines were a little bit bigger so I had to evenly sand them down so I got them down to the same diameter. Well, I'm pretty close to it. So we're not going to cut them down but just showing you that you want to address this problem if they're missing or not there. Especially on this side right here. Okay so let's go ahead and address this open vacuum leak for this hot air choke. We're going to tap and thread it and stick this screw in there. I'm just going to show you because it's very important that you're aware of that hole right there because I don't even want to know how many people out there have had problems with these because they got a freaking vacuum leak that they don't even know exists. Okay, so this one doesn't even have a choke on there, but they usually have a clip right there. It's already off. Okay, so I don't know why I was calling us a heat riser because they used to have that tube that came out that I always call a heat riser choke and... I don't know, but hot air choke is the correct term for this. And always check on your carburetor because this is a 3310-3, a newer model. Well, I don't know how new, but probably from the 80s. And you can see we got that port that goes straight to manifold vacuum. So we need to block that off permanently. I know it's common sense to plug that hole, but we're going to go over the correct thread size just to show me doing it and just so you know what you got to do to your carburetor. Okay, so this is a little threader I'm using. You can get it at Lowe's. It's pretty cheap. It just has the smaller sizes. Okay, so we're going to be using number 10 by 24, which is just coarse thread. Number 10 screw. Always make sure that you know exactly what threader you're using. So we've got the number 10-24 plug tap. So we're just going to kind of ease it in at first. We can see it starting with no problems. I'm going to throw a whole bunch of oil on here. This is cutting oil. Just go a little bit, then we back it out and clean it off. See, in the way that we threaded it, if somebody in the future wanted to run that hot air choke, they could put the gasket back on there and run that without any problems. We could put something on there, like a little rubber gasket or something, but just for right now, for the video, 
We're just showing it that it is plugged off and that's a permanent plug. Okay, so let's get this throttle plate, base plate off. So I was talking about why did they put this on here. I guess you have to use this arm with a 50cc accelerator pump, but it does have that spring on there. I just thought that was a little bit odd. So this one had those kind of screws that were kind of smashed on the end. So I had to grind them off so I wouldn't strip everything out. So I guess you got to do that sometimes. Now what I do to them is mark them. I just put one dot there, two dots there, and so on. Okay, you got to get this stuff off right here. Remember we got this on the vacuum secondary, we got this little lockout rod needs to come off for your secondaries. So just remember it's got this little spring you got to unhook. Let's get it out of the way. Okay, so this is a very common problem you see where this little throttle shaft is loose in here. This can cause problems like gas dripping out of here and the biggest problem is a vacuum leak. Now Holly says if you got more than 10 thousandths play in here, this thing needs to be replaced or rebushed. And you can see clearly that this has about probably 25 thousandths of play in it. This was the worst one I had. So if you pay attention to this, this is aluminum and obviously this is going to wear out, not this. You can clearly inspect this and tell that this has no wear at all. All the wear, like I said, happens on this aluminum. So this is the other side that never gets wore and it's not wore at all. It always happens right here. So I was reading about it and people say that this gets loose right here because people have the spring and the accelerator pump so it's constantly battling both ways and just kind of grinding on that aluminum. Okay, so they were saying put the spring on the front towards the front and then that way the accelerator pump they kind of even each other's pull apart and in other words would keep that lasting a lot longer in which I am going to do that. I'm going to run the spring to the front. So another thing that will wear that out is using too heavy of a spring which I actually have a real heavy spring on my Chevelle right now. So the first thing we want to do is we want to mic the part of the shaft right here that has been riding on the aluminum to see if we have a consistent number all the way across. So we're zeroed out and we got 0 0.365 exactly. Go to the next one, 0 0.365. Throttle cable side, 365. 365 so we know for a fact that this thing is not worn at all they sell these and you see them for like 20 something dollars it's very tempting to buy one of these but you usually don't need one unless it's actually bent right here on the end which this one's not the problem is here on this base plate i never see just this little base plate for sale they always want to sell the whole thing and it can cost around 120 dollars and that's a lot of money for most people So you look on this throttle shaft and you can see it has these little places that are a little bit smaller. I don't know if they intentionally did that because they knew about these wearing out, but it doesn't really matter. We just need to mic that and see what it is. 0.350 all the way around. So we know these are a little bit smaller. So now we understand these two numbers. Okay, so on the Holly Rebuild Kit, I don't know if it was a trick kit or which one, but it came with these little strips. I don't know if these are nylon or Teflon, but let's measure these. Always zero out your mic every time you use it. Okay, so we got like 12 thousandths. Always move around. 12, 13 thousandths. Let's check this little thin one. Okay, so all these strips are 12, 13 thousandths. So we clearly see that those 13 thousand strips added to the small part is gonna get us around here. So Holly says if it's more than 10 thousandths worn, then you need to fix this problem. So the first thing you do is you're gonna try to add those strips right here and see if it fixes the problem. So let's add one right there. Okay, so it should push it in, but you can clearly see that this one's so worn that this little strip ain't really doing anything. But let's just check it out. Pull it out and just make sure it's in that little groove and it'll work its way back in. Okay, so you can see it did take some of it out, but it still has about 15 thousandths, which is still too much. Okay, so in other words, this bore right here is screwed up. But we need to fix this thing the right way. So let's look at that little boring rod and see if this is something that is easy to do or something that's super difficult. So this is a little reamer kit you see on eBay for $38.99. I got this from Carb Junkies, and you see this all the time. And we're going to see if this is easy to use or hard to use or, or what the deal is. 
So make sure you get the one for the right shaft. This is a 3-8 shaft because they do have 5-16s. Now the point of this is that this is 3-8 shaft right here. And you're going to ream it out to 7 16 and then these bushings are going to fit in there and fix your problem 100% and permanently. And the good thing about it is they sell these bushings. I think they're 2 or $3 a piece. So if it ever in the future, you could replace these bushings. So if this works out, I'm probably going to order about a lifetime supply of these bushings and always have them around to help people fix their carburetors. You notice it's got the little neural part and it has different types. They do say that um, if the bushing has problems, you're just going to lock tight it in there, which is fine. I forgot to get some lock tight. Hopefully we don't need it. But of course, the different types of neurals, uh, the big neurals would be if you kind of got the hole too big and you get the you get it. The fine ones are for the perfect hole. So the first thing we do is we mic this perfectly new machine 3.8 shaft and we get 0.370. So you see how the shaft for the carburetor is 0.365, so they machine it for 5 thousandths clearance. They say you gotta do it backwards at first. So I'm thinking we gotta put our chuck of our drill on this side and then reverse it to cut. Because there's no way you're gonna do it like that. Okay, so we know this side's perfect. We don't have a problem on this one. So we're just gonna put a bushing on this one and see how that works out. See, this side fits perfect. There is no play on this side at all. We didn't check the middle one, but you can clearly see that there's no play right here on these two. Our problem is right here. Hopefully that's all we got to do is just ream that side out. So we're just going to oil this up really, really good. This is just some motor oil. You want to use motor oil for this kind of stuff, not cutting oil. They do different things. We're trying to lubricate this now. On this side, we can put some cutting oil, but since it's aluminum, it really doesn't matter. All right, so first of all, let's see if this thing even fits in here. Okay, it actually okay, it actually did fit in there. So we're gonna put it in reverse. You just have to lube these holes up real good. You cannot play around with the good holes on there. This is me the first time doing this on a YouTube video. I've never done this before. This is my test piece. Okay, wrong way. Pull it out. Okay, so okay, so clean our hole up. You see what we did? We used those two to pilot the reamer. It cuts in reverse and we ream that hole. So we just need to make sure we cut it long enough for our bushing. Okay, so it's good. So remember what I was saying that the coarser and fine ones are for how bad you got your hole. Let's see if we can tap a fine bushing in there. And we are gonna be done with this. So now we're gonna put some oil. This is motor oil, not cutting oil. They do different things. Okay, so we're doing this like dumb style. See, I'm inside the house right here. We don't have the proper tools, nothing proper. We're just trying to tap this in with whatever we have. So I could have easily taken this on a harder surface. I'm just showing you that if I can do it in this tub on this bouncy plastic table, anybody can do this. Now, I don't feel like getting my file, but always kind of clean this edge up, bevel it a little bit. I have some little baby files I should go out there and get, but I'm not. This is just a test to see if we can do this. And I am literally amazed at how easy this was. Now we're just gonna pretend this is compressed air. Now let's see what happens when we put this back in. If this works, I'm going to be so excited. It is a freaking super tight fit right there. Okay, make sure you get this in there the right way. I can't freaking believe it. This is, this is perfect. This is brand new. I'm not even lying. This is perfect. My mind is freaking blown. This is the first time ever in my life that I did something like this and it worked. I thought that this was gonna require a drill press and all kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah, but I'm probably getting ahead of myself. Watch me screw up when we drill those freaking check ball 
holes right here. And 15 minutes ago, this base plate was a piece of trash. And now this is a freaking good one. Perfect. Let's check that bushing out. It installed, we didn't have to use no thread locker. Beautiful. So now let's check out this freaking check ball power valve blowout kit. This was like $17. And notice how I buy everything from Holly. So anything that I modified this with is a Holly product. Okay, so they have another one that AED makes. I wasn't sure if it only came with one or two, but that's why I bought this one because it comes with two. And clearly these are different. The ones from AED, I think it's one little fixed little valve housing piece. And this one is just some springs and check balls and some little lock washers. So let's see if this kit works or not. Hopefully it does. Okay, so on this carburetor, we only have one power valve in the front. They say you can't use this particular Holly kit on the elongated ones, but I know you can use the AED ones on elongated holes. We should probably be using a drill press, but like I said, we're not gonna use a drill press because most people don't have a drill press. So it says the little stop is to be there from the top. So let's get that on there. So a little drill bit, a little stop. Gotta go outside, don't I? God dang it. Okay, so it said to set the depth at 0.3 right there of an inch. Right there, we're just gonna go a little bit less just to be safe. Okay, so make sure you're on the right hole. It's this one right here. The screw goes on that hole, but this is straight to manifold vacuum. It has a little chamber in here. So that vacuum is on your power valve to let it open up when it needs to. So we're just gonna try to hold this as straight as possible. Put it on the low speeds. I don't wanna screw nothing up. I'm the human drill press. Okay, so we're gonna blow all the crap out with this. It's all I have right now, I'm sorry. Get all the crap out. Okay, so the hole looks good. I'll install the spring tapered side up and the power valve passage followed by the check ball. Next, tap the spring retainer in place. Let's see if this is easy to do or hard. These are some freaking tiny little delicate parts. See how tiny these little springs are. God dang it, they're so tiny I can't even grab them. We need Stewie's little baby hands. So one tiny little baby spring. Let's see if we can set this in there. Okay, okay, so that is tapered side up. You can clearly see it. Followed by the check ball. Then this little retainer. Okay, so I was worried about that just sliding in there. Let's just tap it in there the best we can. So before we tap that in there, we need to make sure this ball goes down enough. See, we got plenty of room in there. So you see, don't do it with a screwdriver like that. We didn't nick it too bad. It's got a paper gasket, it'll cover it. And our little check ball goes down in there pretty good. Okay, so I gotta take this outside and clean this very thoroughly. So you gotta be careful not to put nicks on the base plate. I was doing it with a screwdriver and that wasn't a good idea. I did go out there and try to knock it in with a little punch that was just a little bit bigger than that circle and it still nicked it up. So just be extra careful when you try to get that in there. But don't worry about it if you do nick it, it's not gonna hurt anything. But just make sure that check ball moves up and down freely. Okay, so another thing you wanna do is get a good file and you wanna cut across the top and sort of deburr it. You can kinda of see all the high spots right there in the middle or high. And even along this part, we kind of cut that down a little bit. We were a little high in the center, a little high right there. We're good now. Okay, so on the accelerator pump cam, it's got a one and a two on the back. So this is the one hole up here. Bushing piece actually has to be turned in the right direction for it to fit. And you want to be able to look at it and make sure that hole lines up perfect. Accelerator pump cams in there tight. Make sure that little spring is on that hole right there. Okay, you gotta lift up on this spring right there. This side's important because it has another spring that's for your throttle. So this one is plastic, it was all melted. I just kind of cleaned it up the best that I could. 
on this one it's like this this is just a little stop and then on this one we're gonna bend this arm get some tension on it with that spring right there just remember you got two springs right here they're gonna close your throttle back so this will also have a little piece of the choke attached to it you can see it's just been cut off okay so now that we've done a professional repair right here and this is 100 percent legit we need to do the same thing with these butterfly valves okay, so the old screws had that little pattern on there and i guess these were just stamped and it squishes the outside of them so if you try to run them out or if they run out on their own they'll get tight and they won't come out and drop in your engine so i had to completely grind these off because they were just like that these are trash now so we're going to borrow some screws off another base plate see these didn't have that crazy squished mark but you can see they just took a little chisel and just staked them and staked them with some kind of center punch but these actually came out pretty easy and i didn't screw them up so we're going to use these for right now i did order some but they're not here yet you see they do sell some of these screws at home depot and we're going to practice with some of these so we don't screw up the real ones but you could also use these i'm showing you this because it's very important that you do this because if this screw comes undone and falls in your engine you're going to be in big trouble now we're just practicing on these but we are going to use the thread locker once we figure out how to stake these the right way okay so the Home Depot screws go right in there. So we're just making sure they're not hitting. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and tighten these up about as tight as we can get them by hand. Okay, so I haven't officially figured out how to stake these yet. I'm just putting this on a vise, Phillips head, real tight. We're gonna put the screw over it and we're just gonna tap it directly in the center. That's the most important. You don't have to use a lot of force. We're just trying to put a little dot in it. So we got those two staked in there. Let's go back inside and see if that's just enough to tighten it or do we need to put those little ridges on there. So they don't want to come all the way out, but we need to do a little bit more than that to them. So just staking them at the back, not really a good idea. So then on the Holly throttle plate instructions, it says to get some of these vice grips and then we're going to put like some little ridges on there. Now the only way you're going to get ridges like that is if you have that little hole stamped in the middle. If you just try to a vice grip a bolt with no hole stamped in the middle is too much meat on there and you're not going to do it so let's see if we can get that look on those it's not going to be like that but it's going to be something trying not to hit anything we're just trying to vice grip that freaking brass bolt without hitting anything god dang it now we're going to try to go up a little bit because you can see how it gets smaller in the middle so we're going to kind of just we already made some grooves. We're trying to stay in the grooves, but we're just trying to put a little bit more force on it. Damn. Be careful if you buy these. They want to pinch your fingers right there. Almost got me, but not that bad. Crappy design. So you can see that it sort of gave it that little look with ridges. And we're not worried about how it looks. We're just worried about this thing not coming out. So let's check that out now. So 100% success. We got it about halfway out when it reaches that little ridged part in there it will not come out so this will not ever fall in your engine okay so i'm just going to do this with four home depot screws it can't hurt anything so we got our thread locker ready we use either red or blue either one's fine so we're just going to get everything adjusted on here first and then do one screw at a time with the thread locker all right so we got these barely snugged up where they can still move you're going to be using your idle adjustment back and forth trying to work these and get them evenly seated in those boards see if we can still move back and forth you want to aim for that middle right there so now you want to hold these up to a light and make sure the light is consistent on both of them if not you may need to readjust so they're both shut all the way and you can see there's just a little bit of light is coming through both of them so they look good okay so we're going to put the thread locker on them and we're going to immediately go stake them and let this stuff dry it takes like 24 hours Okay, so thread locker you just typically just put one little line down it but these screws are so small okay so that's way too much but that's okay for me actually maybe it's okay to use a lot on these because the threads are kind of loose okay so just check them out with the light one more time 
Okay, so we got them on there. I'm gonna go ahead and stake these and do this and we'll look at them when we're done. So you see how I staked those a little bit deeper? Came out a lot better. Those will probably hold up just like that, but we're gonna go ahead and do the vice grip just to make 100% sure. Okay, see the old ones? See the new ones? So they're locked in there and they will never fall out into the engine. So now we just need to check it in the light one more time because you can still adjust them. So we got thread locker, everything's been staked the way it's supposed to. Everything looks good. So I want to thank Carb Junkies for making that kit available to rebush this throttle plate. This thing's 100% ready to go. Feels like a brand new one. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.